Okay, so one of our new templates is this Coffee Cozy. It has that Get a Grip material on the back. So what you're going to be able to do is cut multiple layers perfectly consistently each time. Here are a few of the Coffee Cozies. This one down here doesn't have a button. I want to find a coffee bean or something cool that you can put on here. You can do all kinds of embellishment. What you don't want to do is add a lot of 3D because your hand is going to be going around this holding that coffee. The other thing to think about is if you're going to use this elastic, these elastics that are round, they are harder to sew over. They tend to move on you. So if you find the ones that are flat, those work better. And also the length that you have here determines where that button is going to go. If you always drink the same kind of coffee from wherever or if it's from your kitchen, always from that same mug, you know, then you can determine that this could be shorter and then the button could be further away. But if you're not sure, make this a little bit longer like this one has been so that you have some room to play with that. The other thing you can do is have a button and a button so you've got a couple options to go with the wider coffee mugs versus the smaller ones. Add your rickrack, add de decoration. There's just a ton of ways to embellish. So I want to talk about some things that we don't want to do. When you choose a fabric like what I have here that has a direction, you can see here this piece of fabric isn't wide enough. So if I put my coffee cozy on here, everything's going to be sideways. The other thing too is that there's text here. If the text matters to you, you need to make sure when you cut that out that you're um, making sure of the direction so that you don't have this the opposite like I have here. This is actually backwards. This was one of the first ones that I did. So when you go to cut your fabrics out, here are three pieces that I have here. You've got your top, you've got your back, you can make it reversible if you want to, and then a batting. You've got all kinds of choices for battings. If you want to do a stabilizer, um, uh, um, iron-on stabilizer works really well too, so you just decide how much cushion you want to have there. I've got four layers of fabric here, and what I've done is I've got every piece here. I thought I did. Let's flip this over. I want every other. So I'm going to place this one like this, and I'm going to come down to this bottom one and go every other because we want to have one for the front, one for the back. When I place this on, if there is a direction, pay attention to that direction. The other thing, too, is if you have a selvage edge, on one of here, one of your pieces there, make sure that you're not getting into that salvage edge. When we go to cut, I want you to think about where your shoulder is. Again, that cutting this way versus cutting this way. You can't tell, but my shoulder's up near my ear. So get it in front of your shoulder. As we go to cut, we're gonna cut. And when I move this, that fabric stays with the template, just like it did with those squares and the triangles and the circles. So I cut, and as I cut, I can move that template along as well. Now I've got four layers of fabric here that I'm cutting. You can do up to eight layers if it's your typical cotton. It's flannel, probably six. I've got fabric here that has rotary cutters and scissors and pin cushions and all those kinds of things. And this is pre-quilted so you can finish this off with a binding. You can finish it off with a serger. You can finish it off with a decorative stitch along the edge. And when you go to cut, you go to cut, and you go to cut, and you go to cut, it's really fast.